you know, a lot of the deaths were people that couldn't pay fines or something, you know, or had been locked up for, you know, just minor, you know, spending the overnight in prison or something for minor drunkenness or, you know, I don't know whether it's minor or not, but drunkenness in public and stuff, you know. Yeah, and that's a key point, like, in that episode that our people are being hit with harsh sentencing, um, you know, during that process of, of court proceedings. They're being hit with really harsh sen- sentences in comparison to the broader community. Exactly right. And another thing as well is that a lot of people, like, you know, especially with episode one, and I think this was a thing that was – it was really important for me because when we first went into this, I, I really did not want to have my voice um, telling this story whatsoever. So I wanted to just kind of sit back and, and let the story tell from the truths of, of David's family. David and mum was like really close, you know, they was everywhere I saw mum, I saw Uncle Junior, so. Like the sibling pact was, yeah, really, really, really strong one. And the love he had for his mother also and all of us as cousins you know it's really biggest heart biggest smile the implementation of the recommendations of the royal commission into aboriginal deaths in custody has been a disaster the federal government will tell you that they've they've implemented the majority well the statistics speak for themselves at the time of the royal commission 30 years ago the figures were as low as 14 percent now that's bad enough but today 30 years after that royal commission it's around 30%. Now, we should be ashamed of ourselves in this country. The Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody recommended that we see less people in jail, that Aboriginal people be diverted away from incarceration, and instead, it's doubled. It's really clear that when you look at the stats, you look at what they're saying, that it's, you know, that they're not lying, you know, that, that you know, people so often, you know, will dismiss... Um, what they're saying is like, you know, oh, that can't be right, that can't be right, but the facts are all there. And you're right, you know, they're getting hit with harsh penalties, but they're also getting hit with these really harsh stigmas. You know, like um, David, when he was, when he died, when he was killed in prison, he was three weeks away from being released on parole. You know, he'd served his time and he had, he had made up for his mistake. And then he gets killed for refusing to hand over a pack of biscuits, which was not an illegal thing for him to have. He legally obtained them. He was allowed to have them, but for some reason the guards and the medical staff were just like, no, we don't want you to have them. And then they storm the cell. They not take, they don't take the biscuits. And then he, he dies because of that, right? And then the, a lot of the comments on social media were, were talking about, oh, why was he in prison? You know, why was he here? Or, you know, he was violent. He should have cooperated. As if they're kind of justifying that his death was somehow, you know, like justified because of, because he was in prison.